Okay, so we don't need to know that, that all angles of one triangle are congruent to all corresponding angles of another, and then the same thing with the sides. All corresponding sides of one are congruent to all corresponding sides of another. We don't need to know those six things for each triangle to be able to show congruence. We have some shortcuts. Now, before I talk about those shortcuts, it's important to try to think about these as, as what's enough information to define a triangle. Okay, and, and that's exactly what these are. Okay, is, is each of these gives us enough information to define what a triangle has to be. Okay, so try to think about it as that, as, like that as we go. Uh, the first one that we get, these are a list of, of five postulates and theorems. The first one we get is side, side, side. Okay, so that means that if we have two triangles, and we know that those two sides are congruent, okay? This side is congruent to this corresponding side over here. We know these two sides are congruent, and then finally the third side we also know are congruent. If that's the case, then we know that these two triangles have to be congruent to each other because of the side, side, side postulate, okay? Now, Again, think about this as what's enough information to define a triangle. And it turns out that if you took three, three side lengths and you pinned those together, so the activity we do in class is, is we take straws and I give you three different lengths of straw and you pin those together at the ends. Hopefully you can see this okay. And I tell you to try to make a different triangle than this one here. Okay, so if you have a chance, do this at home. You'll find out there's no possible way that if, if you pin those together like I've done here, uh, that you could make a different triangle. You'd have to pin them together uh, midway through through the short straw side length or, or something like that. But if you pin them together at the ends so that your three sides are congruent to my three corresponding sides, then there's no possible way that you can make a different triangle than this. Okay, play around with that a little bit if you have time. Okay, and that's side, side, side. Knowing the three side lengths of a triangle is enough to define the triangle. There's no other possible shape that that triangle can take on. Okay, so that's our first one, side, side, side. The next one, side, angle, side. Again, if I have two triangles, And let's say this side, again, is congruent to that side. This side is congruent to that side. And then the angle, and this is important, the angle in between those two sides, not down here, not down here, because that's not in between the two sides, but if it's in between the two sides, then I know these tr two triangles have to be congruent to each other. I have side, angle, side. Side, angle, side. Okay, and the way you could try to, try to think about this is if I define a side length and I define another side length and the angle in between those two side lengths, okay, so I know that there's an angle, some specific angle, call it, I don't know, 105 degrees, whatever, and a specific side length here, a specific side length there. I've drawn enough to define the triangle. Okay, there's no other triangle that I could, could draw now. It's simply a matter of, of connecting my last side. Okay, hopefully that makes sense. You could, you could get the protractor out and a ruler and try that a couple times and see if you could draw uh, a, a triangle with a certain side length, another side length, and a specific angle, and then take those same pieces of information side, angle, and side, and try to draw another triangle, a different one, you won't be able to do it. Okay, that's enough to define the triangle. Okay, third one, angle, side, angle. Again, two triangles. And this time, let's say that angle is congruent to that angle. I've got another angle that's congruent to its corresponding part in the second triangle. And a 
side length, a side length that is in between the two angles, right? Angle, side, angle. So angle, side, angle, that's good. Angle, side, angle. Okay? That's enough to define the triangle. The way you can think about this one, angle, side, angle. Again, you've got a specific side length. And you've got two other sides coming off at specific angles. Okay, so you've defined that angle, you've defined that angle, you've defined that side. Okay, there's no other possible triangle you could draw other than this one where the two other sides are going to intersect. Okay, angle, side, angle is enough to define the triangle. Okay, so that would prove congruence. Next up we have angle, angle, side. Two triangles, and we know this angle is congruent to that angle, say. This one's congruent to this one. And now we have a side, but it's not the side in between. We have angle, angle, side. So it's one of the other side. It could be this one is congruent to this one. Or it could have been the other side here. But we chose that. So angle, angle, side. Angle, angle, side. And it turns out. This is enough to define the triangle also. Okay, so you would know that this triangle has to be congruent to that triangle. There's no other possible triangle that they could be. Okay, and you can take out the protractor and the ruler and, and draw a triangle. Figure out what these two angles are, what this side length is. See if you can draw another triangle that has those same pieces of information. But it's different, won't be able to do it. Okay, won't be able to do it. Now, before I talk about this last one here, I want to talk about a couple ways that you cannot, cannot prove triangle congruence, okay? These are not congruent, okay? The first, if I have two triangles, and I know, let's take, this angle is congruent to that angle. And this side is congruent to that side. And then finally, my third thing, this side is congruent to that side. Okay, I could ask you, what would that be called? That would be called angle, side, side. Angle, side, side. And that is not, again, that is not enough to show that two triangles have to be congruent to each other. Okay, one easy way to remember that is, is what does angle, side, side spell out? It's a bad word. We can't use it. It's not just because it's a bad word, it's because it truly doesn't work. And let me draw this a little bit differently and, and show you why. Why angle, side, side, or we'll write it backwards, side, side, angle, why that does not work. Okay. Let's say, just draw this a little bit differently. Let's say this was my angle that I know is congruent, and then these two sides. Okay. If I define a certain angle right here, okay, so I know that this side comes off this side at a certain angle, and I know what this side length is, right? It's, it's that length right there. I don't know what this side length is, right? That's not been defined here, but I know this angle is defined that side length is defined, and then this other side length is defined also. Okay, so it, it's defined as it could be this, but I could also, since I have not defined this angle, I could also take that side length and change it. You probably agree that I could also draw it like this, and it's still the same side length as it was over here, but I swung it in here because I don't have a, a, a defined angle and I don't have a defined side length on the bottom so I can redraw this triangle again like that and hopefully that you can see that but if not think about it like this okay I can take this side length here and just swing it in there and keep my triangle basically I've still got that same length that hasn't changed 
and this hasn't changed. None of those things have changed. I've just taken my side and swung it in because I didn't define that angle. I didn't define that side. Hopefully that makes sense. Okay, so no, we'll call it side side angle or angle side side. Okay, so remember that. And then the last one you might be tempted to use would be angle, angle, angle. Again, we can't use that. And here's the quick, easy way to see that. If this is an equilateral triangle, I know that each of these three angles is going to be 60 degrees. They're all congruent. And the same thing, I could draw a bigger one over here, right? Where, again, equilateral. All three angles are congruent. So all three of this are congruent to all three of the corresponding angles over here. But clearly, those are not the same triangle. One is bigger. These would be similar triangles, but not congruent. So no angle, angle, angle. Only use these. Okay. And then the last one, real quick here, is the HL theorem, hypotenuse leg theorem. Okay, this is only used for right triangles. So I have to know that I have two right triangles. Okay, and then if I know that the hypotenuse of one is congruent to the hypotenuse of another, and one leg, either leg, is congruent to the corresponding leg on the other triangle, that's enough to show that those two triangles are congruent. Okay, and you might be tempted to say, oh, that's just angle side side, which we can't actually use, right? We just showed that. But here's why this works. And again, it's only for right triangles. Okay, if we've defined one side length, right, and we've defined another side length of a right triangle, we really know the third side length too. Why? Because the Pythagorean theorem, right? Again, if you know two side lengths of a right triangle, you still you know the third because of the Pythagorean theorem. Okay? So that's why the hypotenuse leg theorem does work. It's really similar to side, 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 not angle, side, side. Okay? So up next, some examples uh, of how you'll use these five theorems.